Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Welcome back. Another episode of Supreme Being here with your host, BC. Hey, go to teambcevents.com. This is last minute. But next week, May 28th, my buddy Pablito, Pablo, is coming back from Mexico. We're going to do like an impromptu event. A lot on about at every level as an entrepreneur, salesperson, real estate agent, whatever it is. Um, it's going to be a couple hours, open Q&A at the end. Shifts to make during this um, change in the market, in the economy, financially, in your business, in your sales game, in your marketing. I'm going to cover a lot. Um, and it's going to be cheap. It's only, only going to be 20 bucks. We're streaming it online. And we're also going to do it in person here at my office in Miami. Um, it's rare that I do something cheap like this. That's like a conference style. So those of you who have kind of been sitting on the fence, you never really got anything. You haven't come to my events in a long time or you never have. This would be a good opportunity for you to get something a little bit more in depth, um, really specialized and for only 20 bucks. So it's at teambcevents.com. When I'm touring as well, you can find events on that website. So make sure you save it. All right, let's get started. So today I want to talk a little bit about subtleties in your communication. Now, this is where I think I reign supreme in this and some other particular subjects because I've geeked out on it so much. I've applied this information so much in my own life. I'm out there talking with people and interacting with people on a daily basis. And I've studied it so much, right? At every angle, different subject matters. Um, I mean, just the whole nine, right? And I want to give you a few, maybe three, four today that I think are starting points for you to really effectively become much more well-versed in the subtleties, okay? The subtleties is what reigns supreme in a communication. We know. You've seen the percentages, whether they're off a little bit or even a good chunk. 7% of your communication is words. The vast majority is your body language and then your tonality. We know this. However, there's another language underneath there expressed through body language and other things. But most importantly, you have to understand the receptors of the human being, meaning the receptors of communication. How are they interpreting particular things? Okay, because we're going to discuss that today, too. Subtleties in your communication, meaning things that people don't know that you're doing. Okay. One of them is this. And this, I remember when I first created my very first door knocking product, I talked about this in that product specifically. Where when you engage with somebody, right? Like let's say I'm engaging with somebody on the street, I'm knocking on a door, I'm having some sort of interaction, right? Certain things are perceived as people as seeking rapport or trying too hard or hey, I want something from you. And you need to be certain that you're not displaying these things early on in a conversation because until you hit the hook point, until you've built rapport with the person, until you guys are in the ebb and flow, back and flow of conversation, and this thing becomes secondary or insignificant, any subtlety in your communication that indicates to them that you're seeking rapport, that you want something from them, it will put them off. It will repel them. Okay? So as an example, for those of you who... Um, like have bought that product or come to an event where I've explained this a little bit, you'll remember that I told you, like, let's say I knock on the door. The one little detail that I told you is, hey, when you're standing there, right, you're not facing them head on. You're kind of at an angle, like let's say a 45 degree angle. But what did I always tell you? I said, on both of your feet, be slightly leaning back on your back foot. So if my feet are not like side to side, Right, I'm at a 45 degree angle, meaning my left foot or my right foot is in the front and the other one is like 45 degrees to the back. I'm going to shift my weight to my back foot. Now, to a lot of people, it's like, well, I do that naturally or what's the big deal? Dude, it makes the biggest difference because when you're looking for something, when you're seeking rapport, when you really want somebody's attention, when you're talking to a girl that you really like, when you want to get your point across, when you're coming, when you're being needy or whatever it is, right, where we're like, trying too hard, you're always leaning in. You won't notice it, but you always are. If I was to take a picture of you or a video, even if it's slightly, you're leaning in. And that subtly is misinterpreted by people. They take it as, uh-oh, and because you're leaning in a little bit too much, they start to pull away, right? It's a back and forth in a communication, even on a subliminal level, and you have to know that. So by me leaning away, I'm coming off as non-needy subliminally to them. It's that little switch and subtlety. Now, for a lot of people, this is difficult because you're so worried, nervous. What am I going to say that you don't pay attention to these details? So put it on your notepad and say, you know what? This is something I'm going to be a little bit more mindful of now and work on because this makes the biggest difference. Let's say somebody is now at the door, right? Or in person and they start walking away. What do you think I'm going to do? I'm already leaning back. As I continue to talk, 
I'm going to take a half a step back as I'm talking. Because if they're pulling away, especially pulling away first, I'm going to match that. Because what do we typically do? They pull away and we reach in. No, 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 don't close the door. No, 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 don't leave. Eh, wrong. You chase them away. Again, whether you preemptively do it or you mirror what they're doing, when they pull away, you pull away. Or you preemptively, if you still feel like you haven't hit the hook point after those first couple seconds, take a half a step or a full step back as you're speaking. Right, And then when you start capturing them again, you can walk towards them a little bit again until you're in rapport. But this is a subtlety that you really need to work on. And again, today we're just doing a podcast, so I'll leave it at that. But pay attention, leaning back, pulling away, understanding when to take the step back or lean back, when to lean forward. Something you definitely need to study more and you need to improve because this is huge when it comes to in-person communication, whether you're a speaker, whether you're talking to people in public, whatever it is, it is tremendous. And you will be just surprised that when you start doing this right, how many more people will talk to you. It is unreal. I've had where I take one step back and somebody walks out of their house and closes the door and they're like, how can I help you? With one step, it's incredible, okay? That's number one. Number two is this. A subtlety that you need to know is when with your facial expression, when to be more stoic, right? When to smile, when to make particular expressions, right? Because although mechanically this is a move, a lot of people do not understand based on where the moment is in a communication, what face to give. Let me give you one example. If I'm delivering a line that I know is going to pierce through somebody's soul, be, in, be interpreted potentially as in quotes, even though I hate this and I don't think this exists, this is bullshit, politically incorrect, right? Too blunt, too raw, too honest, whatever you want to call it, right? Let's say basically I'm going to say something that potentially to the average person might sting a little bit. Let's say it's true, but we know if we just say it as it is, it's going to sting. And we're looking to refine our delivery a little bit, right? The best thing you can do that's a subtlety is when you say something that's harsh, it's right after you say it and you're looking at them, you smile. Man, when you do this, oh, whatever you said hits and it works. It will not be interpreted in a negative way. How can I prove this to you right now? Let's say I cuss at you. Ah, fuck you, man. And I keep a serious face. Fuck you, man. That's taken as a direct insult. But if I'm like, ah, fuck you, man, and I smile, it's not taken seriously. What changed? We can say slightly the delivery in my example, sure. But in person, it would be my smile. Because when I smile at them, I let them know that I know. I let them know that I know and they can relax and they can fully duplicate, right? Understand what I'm saying and not let their emotions get in the way. This is a huge subtlety that a lot of people never unlock in their sales game. They do nervous laughs. They make expressions at the wrong times is what they do because they're, try they're trying to figure a situation out, think on their toes, and they're all over the place. But you need to learn to be calculated. You need to know when to maybe even lean in a little bit and give them more of like a serious look because they're, they're explaining something to you and you want to communicate to them that you're really listening and paying attention and internalizing what they're saying. I mean, there's a million examples. But the first one is the most clear cut, simple, cut and dry that I can give you that illustrates this point. If I cuss at you in a serious tone, you'll be offended or take it seriously. If I smile, it takes all the crushing elements of that blow off of it and it's taken as more of a joke, right? So the next time you got to say something to a client that's harsh, right? Or tell them no, pop a smile in after and you'll see how much more readily it's received, all right? That's number two. Here's number three, right? I might give you one more, but this one, even though it's obvious, people still, I think, don't understand that you have to think of this one as like a dial, right? And I'm referring to spacing. A lot of people lack spatial awareness, meaning when they're talking to somebody, they don't understand what too close or too far is, right? Now, there's no exact measurements like, oh, too close is within 26 inches of the individual and too far is more than 65, right? But there's a general bubble that we can say, right? In regards to people's level of comfort, whether you're in rapport or not, and how to navigate that. So as an example, right? 
one thing you can do to start extending this and making this a little bit more in your favor is when I talk to somebody, right? Typically, I want to be at least an arm's length away, right? It's just a rule of thumb. Like, let's say I'm talking to somebody. I don't want to be facing them shoulder to shoulder in the beginning. I want a little bit of space, potentially at an angle. And I want to have a little bit of distance so they feel comfortable and, and, and my presence doesn't intimidate them or want them to move back, okay? So what can we do to start alleviating this or create a bigger buffer zone so that we're comfortable in a wider and closer and farther range of distance? Well, break the distance temporarily. Here's a move you can do. So when I would door knock, what would I do? I would knock. Maybe I had a flyer or a business card. I would start talking to them and I would temporarily step in to hand them a, a um, flyer. Right now, what I would immediately do to soften that blow of me penetrating their social bubble, whatever you want to call it, is I would stand shoulder to shoulder with them next to them as I explain something on the flyer. So I'm doing two things here. I'm standing next to them, not directly in front of them, which alleviates pressure. But number two, I'm putting our attention on something else. I'm putting our attention on the flyer or pointing to somebody across the street. Because when you divert attention, it takes away from the potential discomfort of the distance of you and their body, right? Now, what I would do immediately after that is stay in there for a couple seconds. Then I would step back out to my original position and continue talking, right? I just effectively show that I can go in their bubble and come out and I have an understanding of spatial awareness, again, communicating to them that I know that they know, right? When you start doing this more effectively, you become infinitely more effective as a communicator, especially in person, especially on stage and many other things because these are the little, we can say subtleties and tricks of the trade that demonstrate to somebody that you know what you're doing, not on a conscious level, on a subconscious level, because suddenly they just feel comfortable. Suddenly they just find themselves talking to you. Suddenly they say things like, well, I don't know why I'm talking to you, but I don't talk to anybody else. Well, I know, dude, I know. You don't know, but I know. Okay. So I think this is a good spot to stop it. Make sure you check out our event. Our event. I'll be discussing this, this topic and many others much more in detail teambcevents.com. Again, appreciate everybody who supports Supreme Being. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.